Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. Uh, the following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received. So uh, I first spoke um, uh, with this other dear brother of ours. Then after that, I spoke with the wife and uh, the wife then told me that sometimes our dear brother what he does is like he loses his mind after he is attacked by the spirit of uh, uh of the men that uh, they were using on their um on one of their mine even though they have a small mine a, a gold mine so this is um the conversation that i had with the wife uh, the message that she sent to me reads like this hello how are you my name is miriam not a real name and i am a wife of an of a miner but used to be an illegal gold mine here in zim so after a very long struggle we raised enough money then we got our small claim at this other place where a lot of gold was coming out so brother nashi my husband was someone that was very faithful to me he would get his money when some of his friends when they would go out with some prostitutes he would would always give me that money and my husband always told me that the reason as to why he wanted to get rich quickly because each and every time when you would go underneath the earth it was always dangerous and it was a life that was filled with risk and hardship at that time whenever my husband will be underground i used to pray and pray and pray so that at least he can come out alive again then it was in 2012, my husband, whom I'll call Tonerai, that was when he made a decision that changed our lives forever and not in the way that we had hoped. So in those early days, my husband was just another struggling miner. We were living in a small rundown house in Kwekwe. We were barely scraping by. The gold that he was finding in the illegal mines was never enough and often he would come back empty-handed when he would bring something back i would always thank god that at least god had given to me a man that was faithful at least it was far much better because as for some of the other women they were complaining and it was far much worse because those women they'll be complaining like the husband does not bring anything and the husband will be busy prostituting himself so life was very hard we had nothing no future and he would come back covered in debt and he will be exhausted no future for our children that is what used to hurt me when i would say to me my wife what am i doing i can't even provide a future for my child we do not have any financial stability at all that was when he came back and he told me that in their syndicate he had heard about some rituals and these rituals uh, they wanted to work as a as the syndicate to go and consult with a traditional healer who could make them to have some powers so that when they go underground they will be able to get the gold quite easily when he told me that this is what he had been planning with some of his syndicates i laughed it off because my husband and i especially tony rai he was a religious man raised to fear god and i could not believe him because he was an eldest son i could not imagine him turning to such extreme measures an eldest son from church because his parents they were both elders at the church where we used to go to as the months passed and desperation grew something in him i saw changed he started spending time with a group of other miners and then they kept on talking about these traditional healers who could offer more than protection from danger for the first time in his life i saw my husband drinking some alcohol on that day when they were drinking alcohol at the place where we were staying that was when i had one among them speaking about going to a traditional healer still i could not believe that he could do such a thing later in the evening that was when he told me that he had been discussing with his syndicate members and they had made that decision to go and visit a traditional healer one night Tonderai came home with an intense look in his eyes he told me that he had met a very powerful nganga a traditional healer a man feared and respected in that area where they were working 
This traditional healer had told him that if he wanted to make raw money from the mines, he would need to perform a ritual with his other syndicate members. It was a ritual that was going to involve using body parts from a human, a young woman, a young man, or a child. I felt a chill as it ran down my spine and I pleaded with him not to do it. Because he said that what they were supposed to do was that they were supposed to go to the graveyards. Once they would have gone to the graveyards, each one amongst them had to dig up his own grave and to take a few of the human body parts. So they were going to look for those graves where they, there would be some signs and then they would calculate the number of years that the person would have lived and they had been told that they were supposed to take some body parts of a person that would have died below the age of 35 and that was what my husband did i thought that my husband was not going to go through with it but him being him he then went ahead with his friends and they went into this other graveyard and one by one they started digging up the graves and they take few of the remains of that person that was buried in the grave a few weeks later and his, fellow, and his fellow miners, they disappeared for days. When he returned, he did not speak that much, but I noticed something different about him. He had grown so distant, and there was always coldness in his eyes. Soon after that, things began to change. Gold seemed to flow into his hands as if it was by magic. Tundrai would go to the mines and return with more than enough to feed for our family. And within months, we had moved into a larger home and he married me. At that time, we had stayed in marriage for almost 10 years and he had not yet paid for my bride price. When he got the money, we then went with me to our village with his relatives and he then paid for my bride price. The money was coming very fast, brother Nanshi. That was when we purchased our first bus and before long, we were owning two buses, one of the bus it used to go to Bait Bridge. It would be carrying those people that go to Messina. Then they would buy some clothes and then they would return and sell those clothes in our country. But I did not know that whenever the devil gives you something, you would want something back in return. That was when my husband for the first time started to run mentally ill. Like he told me, we were just sitting down and he just said, Ah, my wife, if it ever happens that I go crazy, I do not want you to inform my relatives. Just like that. And I said, why are you talking like that? He then said, because tonight I am going to be losing my mind. And he said, when I have lost my mind, do not inform anyone. Do not inform my relatives, but inform one of my friends. So when we went to bed, that was when my husband started acting violently he told me what i was supposed to do the moment that he will start to act violently and then i started to do the incantations speaking with the spirit of that person whom he had taken and used the body parts and i could not sleep i was always scared i was sitting in the corner waiting to run away if he was going to be violent with me so after that that was when one of our buses was involved in in an accident and then my husband told me that this was what was going to happen each and every time our bus would have an accident one of our bus can just have a tire puncture but with that small accident the bus there will be someone who will die so we keep on using the spirits of those people but the problem is that as we are growing older my husband he is now losing his mind more than he used to like in the past i used to know that per year maybe you would lose his mind only two times and then it would be like a period of one week but now brother nashi the problem is that sometimes in a month he can lose his mind maybe for three days every month every month and i am not allowed to tell his relatives so i do not know what else to do as for my husband he has since refused to tell me where exactly he went to perform these rituals with his syndicates he said that this is a secret that they have to keep so how am I going to help him? Money we do have, but I don't have a solution. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our listeners. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world.